Well, hey everybody, it's Kev Bo Jones with another episode of the Wonderful World of Baseball Cards. I hope everybody's having fun at the National, and I've been really enjoying everybody's content and their pickups. It's been really cool to kind of get an, uh, a real-time review at the National. Uh, maybe I'll make it someday, but uh, this year was not the year. But I wanted to do a quick little player profile on a, on a player that's always intrigued me, um, Kenny Hubbs. And a lot of you probably don't know who he is, or you may have heard something a little about him. Uh, he's kind of a footnote in Major League history, but uh, Kenny Hubbs was uh, 1962 uh, NL Rookie of the Year uh, for the Chicago Cubs. Second year that uh, the Cubs had the Rookie of the Year, Billy Williams was uh, the Rookie of the Year in uh, 1961, and... Uh, excellent fielder as well. He won the Gold Glove that year in 1962 with an emerging Cubs team filled with young superstars, up-and-coming superstars and Hall of Famers. Ernie Banks, Ron Santo, Billy Williams, um, and so on. And they were really building that core of that team uh, that uh, historically collapsed in 1969. But uh, Kenny Hubbs, very, very tight, came up with Billy Williams, came up with Ron Santo, and uh, was the 1962 uh, AL or NL Rookie of the Year. Um, played again in 63, had another very solid year. Um, this is his 1963 tops. Um, on his way to just a great career um, with Santo again, Williams, Banks, um, Billy Williams, um, just a great, great player. Um, very close with his teammates. Those guys, like I said, Santo, Williams, and, and Hubs all came up together. Uh, Lou Brock as well um, was playing for the Cubs at this time. Uh, very, very tight with Kenny Hubs. And uh, they traded Brock. The Cubs traded Brock in 64. But uh, um, so you think about it, they had Kenny Hubs, Billy Williams, Ron Santo, Ernie Banks, and Lou Brock um, playing. They, they could have been a pretty fantastic team. Um, but that all came to an end um, in uh, February of 1964. Kenny Hubbs, he passed away in a, in a single-engine plane crash. He was a pilot um, who, who flew his own planes um, to conquer his fear of flying. And Topps released this card in his honor um, in 1964 um, to honor his memory. And I'm not sure that Topps has ever done a kind of an in-memoriam card again. Um, I know they did the Roy Campanella Symbol of Courage in 1958, but this is kind of a different um, card and, and one of the more intriguing cards of the 1960s for Topps Baseball. Um, I looked at this in a CSG specifically because I think the black label goes um, with this, but uh, it's got a little write-up on the back as well about Kenny Hubbs. Um, Ron Santo tells the story that uh, he was visiting with Kenny Hubbs um, out in California um, two weeks before, or two days before he passed away, and... Uh, or maybe it was out in Utah, uh, was visiting with him um, and was actually flying with him in that plane um, a couple of days before he, he crashed in the plane. So this is basically Kenny Hubbs' little tops PC run. There you've got his rookie, his 1963, and then the In Memoriam card. But the story doesn't end for Kenny Hubbs. Uh, some of you may know this. Um, he makes an appearance on a later card for a different player. Uh, some call this the ghost of Ken Hubbs appearing um, in a later top set. And that card is the 1966 tops Dick Ellsworth. Uh, that is not Dick Ellsworth in the picture. That's actually Kenny Hubbs. Um, I don't know if Topps did this intentionally, if somebody maybe said, hey, let's get Kenny on there. If it was just an honest mistake. Um, but uh, I just recently picked this card up and you can't see it, but there's a uh, 
there's a pretty good crack in the slab um, or a, a very deep scratch. Um, so when I got this on eBay, I, I reached out to the seller just to let him know. He's like, send it back. I'll send you a refund. I said, no, don't worry about it. He's like, it's my fault. I should have seen it on the, on the scan. Um, but uh, ended up basically refunding me for this card. Uh, the 1966 Tops, Dick Ellsworth with the ghost of Kenny Hubs on there. And um, then the story isn't quite over on this card, which is a very intriguing card in the Tops annals. Of course, there's other players who who have made appearances on cards of, that it was a different player, but but... Uh, never from someone who, who was deceased in his playing days. Um, and then about three days after this card came, I got this note. Um, it says, Kevin, he says, I know it sounds crazy, but I found this card today. I know we are squared away, but I'm getting rid of my cards and would like you to have this one. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks, Chris. So I, I got this package. And I'm like, what, you know, what is this? And he sent me... Um, a PSA 9 um, with a print defect, which I have no idea where the print defect is. Um, of this, he, he found another one of these Dick Ellsworths uh, with Kenny Hubs on it and uh, just sent it to me um, out of the goodness of his heart. Really good guy. So, um, you know, I guess I'm stacking, uh, stacking uh, 66 tops Dick Ellsworth cards here, but. Uh, just a really neat story. Kenny Hubs, like I said, I kind of gave you just a brief summary, but a forgotten player um, who probably was on his way to, if not a Hall of Fame career, at least a multiple all-star, multiple gold glove type career. So um, that's about it. That's the tale. And uh, Kembo Jones with the uh, wonderful World of Baseball cards. And I'll see you soon. Later.